Believe it or not, this is actually a watch and not some strange proof on flat earth theory. It's the Blue Planet from Sega Designs, and it is by far the most unusual watch I've ever gotten to see. If you're not familiar with the brand, Sega is a Chinese-based company that has gained a reputation for building some very unusual watches, and then winning design awards based on those watches as well. Most of their watches that I've seen online have been rather skeletonized, whereas this is completely different, and different than pretty much anything else I've ever seen. It's also a watch with a little bit of a message behind it, as according to the brand, they wanted to design a timepiece that helped bring people together, and just remind them to live in harmony with the natural world. Which is a nice sentiment. Now, there's a lot of interesting features and details with this one, and we might as well just jump into it. However, before we do, I do need to let you know that Sega gave this watch to the channel, and as far as I know, they're not going to ask for it back, hence that promotional tag. That said, let's get global. So let's first start off by talking about the specs, and then I'll let you know how you can actually read this watch. Believe it or not, it's actually rather simple. This one is a bit of a big boy at 46 millimeters, and since it's a really round case, that's 46 millimeters all the way around, not counting the crown. It's also a bit thick at 15 millimeters, but that 15 millimeters doesn't really tell the whole story, as it has a rather interesting case shape. Basically, it's a flying saucer, and more so than any other watch I've seen. The blasted titanium case creates a buttery smooth texture that also looks a little bit out of this world. The case also tapers dramatically in both directions from the midpoint. So it's really only 46 millimeters at that midpoint, and that 15 millimeters is from the very top of the domed sapphire crystal to the crystal on the exhibition case back. And quite interestingly here, that crystal on the case back also has a slight curvature to it, which is something I've never really seen before. And to be honest, I can't really think of a good reason to have a domed case back. But it does help reinforce that flying saucer shape, as there is a nice uniform curvature across the entire thing. Now, rounding out the specs, you have a minimal 30 meters of water resistance, 20 millimeter lug width, an in in-house movement, and a fairly light weight of 72 grams on its rubber strap, all of which is thanks to the titanium housing. The price here is also going to shock you and I want to save that as a surprise until the end, just that it's fresh on your mind right before you leave a comment. As for how to read the watch, well, it's actually quite simple. Looking at the watch at the very outer edge, you have a fixed ring with your standard 12-hour markings. Then, just inside that, you have a ring with your minute indicators. And this ring actually rotates around every hour, basically acting as a minute hand. Which then brings us to the center 3D textured section of the Earth which basically acts as an hour hand and does fully rotate every 12 hours. Now, on that topographical map, there is this very small nautical looking compass, and that acts as the marker you use to read the watch. In order to read the time, you just look at where that marker is pointing on both the minute ring and the hour ring, reading both of those in order to get the time. So with these two examples, you can see what six o'clock looks like with that marker pointing at the double zeros as well as the six. As well as this one, where the compass is just past the 10 on the hour indicator and sitting right at 10 on the minute. Thus, it's 1010. It's rather straightforward to do, but a little bit more complicated and more interesting in terms of what's going on behind the scenes with the movement. As in order to accomplish this, Sega had to adjust the gearing ratio. And this is something they're referring to as an asynchronous follow-up technology which is a little wordy for my taste. With a normal movement, every hour that passes, the hour hand advances 30 degrees, right to the next indicator, as well as the minute hand does a full 360 degree rotation. So when you read that normal minute hand, you actually read it in reference to a fixed point on the dial. Whereas with the blue planet, the gearing ratio has been adjusted so that the minute hand actually advances 390 degrees instead of 360. Basically, it's doing a full rotation and then another 30 degrees, just so that it can catch up and sync up with the hour hand. Which is why with the blue planet, you can actually read both the hour and minute just by using a single reference point on the center section. Which in a nutshell is that whole asynchronous blah 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 technology. Now, that's about the best I can describe it, and if you are still a little bit confused, maybe go back and rewatch it, or just keep watching and pay attention to how this thing moves. 
I think eventually you'll get it. So in concept, reading the watch is quite simple, but in practice, it's a little bit more difficult. As even after you understand this whole thing, there is a rather steep learning curve to actually doing it. Plus, the indicators on those rings are in a rather small font painted on in silver paint. So in lower lip conditions, they can be really hard to make out. And that's even before you start to factor in eyes that have gotten a little bit older and don't quite focus as they used to. In some ways, you're almost better off using this like a one-handed watch, which you can do as there are quarter hour markings on the outer ring, assuming you can actually make those out. There's also a bit of a glare problem here too. The upper crystal is a double dome sapphire, and I have to say it is beautifully clear. But when you're trying to look at it, there's just a ton of reflection and glare. Needless to say, they need a lot more AR coatings on this. Now, don't get me wrong here. This is actually a really cool watch. And I really love the 3D nature of the Earth, as well as the textures upon it. I especially love how it's just floating in a bubble sitting on top of a spaceship-looking case, which potentially is a deeper metaphor about how we're all in this together on Spaceship Earth, or something like that. Now, the sheer presence of this watch is simply astounding. This is one that's really going to captivate you and draw a lot of attention. But regardless of how cool it is, with those severe functionality issues, this really just turns into a traditional form versus function argument. With regard to the movement, it is listed as being their own. It's also listed as being a high beat movement with about 40 hour power reserve. And other than that, there's not much else I can tell you. The only other thing I noticed is that the guaranteed accuracy is pretty wide here, as accuracy is only guaranteed between negative 15 and plus 30 seconds a day. And when you find out what the list price is, I think you'll all agree that this should be much narrower. Although, given the nature of the design, it is pretty hard to judge accuracy here, so maybe they just figure there's no point. The strap the Blue Planet comes on is this really simple blue rubber one. And again, at the price, which we'll find out shortly, you could easily argue there should be something more here. But regardless of that, I think it does match the watch nicely, and it does come with quick release as well as titanium hardware. The buckle itself is a little thin and a little angled, which I don't think really matches the round nature of the case, but that's a pretty minor issue. What's really important here is how the watch wears on the wrist. And I gotta say, it is surprisingly comfortable and especially so considering it's a 46 millimeter watch. The lightweight titanium does help, as well as the flexible strap, but this is also one where the specs are a bit deceptive, as the strap's really attached to a small cutout that's inside that saucer. There really isn't a lug to lug here, but if I was going from spring bar to spring bar, it's only 34 millimeters. That and the very saucer nature of the case results in an extreme taper where it hits your wrist. So while visually it looks massive on the wrist, and don't get me wrong, this is still huge, but physically it actually feels a little bit smaller, as a lot of that body, including the crown, is lifted away from your wrist. Now in terms of price, there are actually going to be two different models of the Blue Planet. The first is going to be a steel case model listed at $959, and then you have this titanium one at $1,199. And just let that sink in for a second. If you're experiencing a bit of sticker shock, you're not alone. I only found out about the price last night and pretty much went through the same thing. The thing is, with this watch, I was expecting a little bit of a premium, just due to the materials used and the uniqueness of the design as well as the components. But I was actually expecting this to come a lot closer to what I've seen their other models sell for, and not north of a grand. Normally, I like to talk about the relative value of a piece just in comparison to the marketplace as a whole, but here I don't see a point, partly due just to that sticker shock and partly due to just the novelty of the design. With this one, I'm kind of reminded of that old saying that something is only worth as much as someone else is willing to pay for it, which I think is often true when you're talking about art. In this piece, with all those functionality issues, maybe we should start thinking of it more as a piece of artwork you wear on your wrist. After all, art doesn't necessarily need to have a purpose, function, or utility. It just exists for its own sake, and I kind of feel like that's what's going on here. It's kind of like those Joker watches. Personally, there's not a chance in hell I'd pay $30,000 for one, but obviously someone out there is, 
and ultimately that's what matters when it comes to art. But since I'm a watch reviewer and not an art critic, I'm here to really focus on the watch side of things. I'd say the Blue Planet is very comfortable, very well made, and just has an incredibly unique and visually interesting design. But it's one that comes with a rather steep learning curve. And even after you've figured it out, in some situations, it's still pretty hard to read. And while the dial is visually interesting, it's not one that I'd say is visually engaging. Once you initially take it all in and just figure out the concepts, there's nothing here that really keeps your attention focused on it. All the parts that do move are moving so slowly, it's about as exciting as watching paint dry. The idea behind the Blue Planet, its core concept is fantastic, but I think the actual implementation needs a little bit more time and work. Just so they could figure out ways to make it more user-friendly, usable, and perhaps engaging. Ultimately, I really do like the Blue Planet, and I appreciate the risks Sega is doing just by doing something different. I'm not sure if I'll ever see anything else quite like it again. However, because it is hard to read, it's not something that I can see someone wanting to wear on a daily basis. Rather, the Blue Planet then becomes something that's extremely situational. And at this price, I think it becomes very hard to justify for most people out there. I mean, a thousand bucks is a lot to spend for the one time a year you go to the Planetarium or Natural History Museum. That said, if you happen to be a wealthy watch collecting environmentalist who's looking for a way to show the world what you really care about, have at it. For everyone else, let me know down below what you think about the Blue Planet. What would you say is a good price, and can you think of a way that you might improve it? And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time, see you next time.